My name is Diana Classy. I'm a master gardener from with the Missouri Valley Master Gardeners. Used to be a not only master gardener, but you guys have to forgive me for that. <laughs> We're going to talk about ways to conserve water in our gardens. Why do we want to conserve water? Okay, I'll give you some ideas and you can give me some ideas too. The one that comes to mind is cost. Water nowadays is getting very expensive. And so if you can save the water in your garden one way or the other, you're going to save some money too. The other thing is um, there is a limited supply of water on this earth and there isn't and of the water that we have on the, this earth, only so much of it is appropriate for us to use. You know, the ocean water is not all that good for us to use. So uh, what? Uh, can you give me some more ideas of why we want to save water in our gardens? Well, come it's on. It's a limited resource. Yeah. It may seem like next to the river, it's unlimited here, but that's not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. We just hate to waste water. We just hate to see it go down the drain. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're going to talk about some ways that we can save our water. We're going to talk about rain barrels. We're going to talk about rain gardens. How many of you have rain barrels? Okay. Have any, do you, any of you have a rain garden? Have you, do you know what a rain garden is? We'll talk about that. How about drip irrigation? Do any of you use drip irrigation? Okay, we'll talk about that. And there are there there are some plants that don't need a lot of water, so we're going to talk about some plants that are that can live with less water. They all need some water, but this will be less water. And then there's a few other creative ways we can save water. Okay, we're going to start with rain barrels. Uh, Rain barrels, you're going to collect water from your downspouts when it rains. And it helps to reduce the stormwater runoff. Stormwater runoff is, you know, is what goes, goes down the, the drains. It ends up in our rivers and our creeks and our lakes and stuff like that. Some of it's good and some of it's not so good. It's free. Rainwater is free, so let's save it. You know, there are states, I believe California is one of the states that doesn't let you have rain barrels, and I don't understand the reasoning of that. Or I don't know. Does not make sense. I don't think so either. I think they want the runoff. <laughs> For years, I I'm riding. sure that my son actually works out there. He's uh, um, works in in ecology, etc. And he was mentioning that in California that they are, matter of fact, one of the projects he's working on right now is taking all of that water that the, that the, he lives in San Diego, that they use for watering the grass and you know, mm -hmm. and everything. And they're redoing all that water to be actually pure enough to drink. Oh. Um, so they probably, that's probably what- That's probably why they don't want rain barrels. Because they're really low in water. It's a great source of water for your gardens. You want to see it? Because it's better than city water, it doesn't have the chemicals in it. Um, we used to, a bunch of friends, well, I used to work for a landscaper, and one of his things was, if you water with city water, your plants will stay alive. If, you, if it rains on them, they thrive. Have you noticed that? You know, all the last couple of years, we had to keep our plants alive by watering it with city water, or if you're fortunate, you might have a well. But with the rain that we've been getting, everything's thriving, especially the weeds, at least in my, in my garden. Okay, rain barrel parts. You can purchase rain barrels all put together. They're, they, they're very attractive, some of them are. Some of them even have little planters on top that you can plant flowers in that will cascade down over them. Um, or you can just buy a kit that you would use to make a barrel into a rain barrel. If you do one yourself, you should look for food food grade containers. Now, they're getting harder and harder to find unless you have a connection. Um, my rain barrels, one of them is a food grade one, but the rest of them are not. So I don't use it on my vegetables, the saved water. I use that on my 
my um my flowers and things yes flowers and trees and stuff like that opaque containers the ones you can't see through are best because they control the algae mine are not opaque so i do have trouble with algae but but once again i'm using it on my ornamentals and you want to have a mesh screen at the top. This is out of my rain barrel. I took it out today so I could show you. So a mesh top does two things. First of all, it's gonna prevent mosquitoes from getting into your, your rain water that you save because you don't wanna grow mosquitoes. And second of all, it helps catch some of the debris that you get off of your roof. If you would have seen this before I washed it off, it had a lot of debris on it. <laughs> A downspout diverter, and you'll see one of those in some pictures where you you take, uh, we use the flexible ones that you attach to your downspout and then it goes into your rain barrel. Uh, fittings, so you have a faucet at the bottom basically. This is what we use. It comes apart and this part goes in your barrel. You drill your hole and this part goes in your barrel and this part's on the outside. So that's your, your nozzle there. an overflow hose so when your rain barrel fills up the water that that is extra needs to go somewhere now this is really short because i didn't bring the long ones but you'll see in the picture that i use a really long one and i also use that same thing to to if you want to have more than one rain barrel to take it from one rain barrel and put it in the next one and you'll see pictures of that in a minute too and cinder blocks to lift your your barrel up because Gravity is your friend. So if you have it on the ground, you don't have any gravity helping the water come out. If you have it elevated some, the water's gonna come out better and you can have it go from one rain barrel to the next, which I have some pictures of that too. But here's a rain barrel drawing that's all put together. And I think in the previous slide, I mentioned, I mentioned a rain chain. And my husband said, what's that? So I put a picture of a rain chain here. It's really kind of unique. Some of them are real basic like this where they're just a chain. I've seen ones that have little cups that goes to one cup and then goes down into another cup and another cup. I've even seen some that have almost the effect of when it rains, there's like a wind chime going on because you hear, you hear music basically as the water's going down. I think that would work well if we didn't have man monsoon rains like we had the other night, that would probably not be sufficient enough. But it's very, I've seen a couple around the area. They're kind of cool to look at. But here's a drawing of a rain barrel. You see where it goes from the downspout through the opening. Now they've, they've put the whole top with screen and put a, a top on it. But it goes through screen and fills up the rain barrel. You see the spigot in the bottom, which is where you're going to get your your water out and then the overflow hose and the cinder blocks that you support it with now you want to think about using caution when you use the harvested water for your edible edibles because when it comes down off of your roof there's various things that it can pick up on its way trees tree poll you know tree pollen roof top, roof um, materials and other things that it could pick up so i i do use my rain barrel water on my vegetables but i don't use them on my root vegetables because i'm watering the, the ground but that's that has to be a decision you make but you can use it definitely for your ornamentals your flowers and your trees and your shrubs and stuff like that you want to direct the overflow hose away from the house quite a ways from the house so it doesn't come back against your foundation or your basement. And consider strapping your barrel down because we do have some serious winds here. And um, one of the things that's pretty common here is, is right before rain, we might get some really serious winds. And that is probably when your rain barrel is gonna be the lightest is before a rain. So you wanna strap it down here. And I like to add a short hose to the spigot. It makes it easier to fill your watering, your watering containers. Here's my rain barrels. I do them tandem. 
So the first one where the where the rain is coming down into it is up higher than the second one, and then the overflow goes and fills the second one. And this picture doesn't show you where the last overflow goes off. And you can see how my husband's got them all strapped down. They look a little rednecky, but they do the job. That's why you might want a pretty pretty one. Or I have also had friends paint the outside of these barrels, you know, with flowers or butterflies or something like that. I'm not very artistic, so that's out of my range. Well, that's not true. You're very artsy with your quilting. <laughs> you could have a quilt oh, yeah, a, a quilt rain barrel. There you go. <laughs> so here is where the, you've got the flexible hose that comes down. And we put, once again, because of the wind, we put bricks on both sides of the hose that comes down and it's going into the now that was a different screen. It's a metal one, but it goes into the screen. And then when that first barrel fills up, it, it can go to the second barrel. Now the second barrel does not have a screen on it because it's, it's going right from one to the other. And that little black area around where it goes into the second barrel, that's, that's the top of a coffee can. You know, one of those plastic ones, it's perfect to go over the hole and, and give it a, a good seal so we won't have mosquitoes getting into that. And see how I put the extra hose on there. These are washing machine hoses. They're the right length. <laughs> so my husband just bought washing machine hoses and they go into my, my two gallon watering cans. Now so, some people will use a pump and they can then pump it to where they want it to go. Uh, there was a lady in the earlier session today she said she puts hers higher on cinder blocks puts a hose on it and the gravity gives it so she can take it where she wants it to go like she would be watering with the regular house water i don't mind the exercise carrying my watering cans around because my yard is not very big so i don't have to carry them very far and then there now you can see how far away i put the last um, overflow hose. I take it quite a ways from the house. And by doing that, you, um, you could take that to a rain garden. And we're going to talk about rain gardens next. So you could take the overflow from your rain barrels and take it right to a rain garden. And we'll talk about that and tell you what those are all about. Is there any questions about rain barrels right now? Because we're going to go on to another topic. Yes, sir. I just, uh, on my rain barrel, I got it on my little shed in the back. I just put a brick through a hose, a hose through a brick, and put it in the bottom of the barrel and just siphon it up. Yeah. Because it's got the gravity at the top of the barrel. Mm -hmm. the yes, it does. Yeah, that's why you put your spigots down at the bottom, too, because you, and, um, that makes it, I mean, I can get all the water out of mine, except for maybe about the last inch. But you're right. You're right. Uh, you can siphon it out. Um, I, I had friends that put s submersible pumps in there so they could pump them out and things like that. Uh, I haven't gotten that technical with mine yet. So I just do the tote method. But, you know, um, like I said, I have a small yard, so I don't have to tote very far. If you have a big yard, yeah, you you probably want to come up with another way to get your water out of the rain barrels. And some people use cisterns if you have a really, you know, if you have the opportunity to dig a, a cistern into your into your property. That's that that's once once again, that's beyond my ability at this time. The the rain barrels pretty much do for me. Okay, what is a rain garden? So we've talked about maybe taking the overflow of our rain barrels and putting them to our rain a rain garden. So what is a rain garden? There's a picture of one. You can tell it's kind of a, a sunken area with plants in it. And it has some rock that goes into it. Now that might be the overflow for the rain barrel. I mean the rain garden or it could be water going in. So it's, it, it's a containment and filtration technique because the plants in the rain garden are going to filter the water as they go down into the ground. 
So it's a slightly sunken area in your landscape where you can plant things that will tolerate being in water for up to 24 hours. So it's not a pond, it's something that's gonna hold it until it drains into the ground. You, um, you wanna position in such a way that you can collect water from your downspouts or your rain barrels. I didn't put that in there, but, and if you have the ability to, you know, uh, get into the curbing, you can have it where it would come from your, your driveways or even, even the street. It's designed to hold water no more than 24 hours, so that, that's, that's where it's not a pond. And with only holding water for 24 hours, you don't have to worry about mosquitoes either because it's going to drain down before that, before they find it. And it provides a way for the plants to filter out contaminants. And we'll talk about what contaminants we're talking about there. And it reduces the runoff into storm drains. Now here's a picture of a rain garden soon after it rained. So you see it kind of looks like a pond, but that's supposed to all, if you create your rain garden correctly, that's going to all drain down into the ground within 24 hours. It helps keep waterways clean by reducing contaminants, the, the motor oils that might come off your driveway um, and other things that are out there. <laughs> It minimizes things like fertilizers and pesticides and things like that going into your waterways. I know when I lived in Maryland, it was very important not to let fertilizers go into the Chesapeake Bay. And the same is true here. We don't want to have our fertilizers go in there because that's gonna cause algae and all the problems that come with that. Um, pesticides, we don't want that in our waterways. And do you remember a couple of years ago when we had all that, what, 2000? 19 when we had all that flooding and it flooded the community gardens and they wouldn't let them use any of the produce because of the animal waste that had gone into the water cows and pigs and such like that so it's going to reduce that and it's going to keep the rainwater on your property where you want it not going down the down the, the gutters and the plants can filter out pollutants which means that the water that's going into our groundwater is going to be cleaner than what what we would get from the storm drains a rain garden really will add to your property because it's going to look good if you see there's another picture of a rain garden and depending on the plants you put in there you're going to draw good bugs you're going to get the pollinators and some other bugs that you may not normally see in your yard and in the process you you could Bring, bring back some more birds because I know we when we moved into our neighborhood there was virtually no birds too many cats I think but the birds eat the caterpillars and the worms that they're going to find in the garden so you'll have the enjoyment of just being able to watch a little more wildlife nice wildlife in your yard how to construct it you want to take it 10 to 15 feet away from your house and if you have a septic system, you don't want it close to that either. Don't automatically choose a low spot in your yard because it might not drain properly. So you might want to need to look for a, a slightly higher spot that drains better. And the way you can tell how well it's going to drain is by doing what, a, what we call a perk test. You're going to dig yourself a hole that's 12 inches deep and about maybe about that wide too, fill it up with 20, with water and see if it drains in 24 hours. If it doesn't, you might wanna find another spot. I'm not sure how familiar you all are with perk tests here, but on the East Coast where the water table is pretty high, you have to have a perk test to even build a house. So we're fortunate here. A small size rain garden is good. That's a good way to start. But depending on how much water you're going to get off your roof or something, you might want to go for a larger one. And aim the, the downspout over rocks or grass to slow down the water before it gets to your, to your rain garden because you don't want a tsunami. You want it to trickle in there kind of slowly. And always call before you dig.
you know, you don't know what your, where your utilities are unless you built your house and you know exactly where it is. You call before you dig so that they can mark that for you. Here's a layout for a rain garden. Now, it says that you want to dig 12 to 24 inches deep. And here's the thing. It depends on your soil. Now, I might have to dig almost that deep myself because my soil around my house is pretty, pretty heavy with clay. But if you have a lot of sand or you know that your soil it drains pretty good, you may not have to go that deep. But you want to amend the soil so that it will drain without, within that 24 hours. And then you want a mulch layer to protect the soil that's in there from washing away. So the mulch will help that. And if you see, there's some what we call berm on the side. So you may not have to go as deep because you're going to dig the soil that's out and put it like a little edge around your your rain garden so you, you wouldn't have to go as deep and it would still be able to, to hold the water. Avoid placing it directly under a tree, under the canopy of a tree, because trees don't often like their roots to be sitting in water. Kind of like I grow roses. Roses like a lot of, a lot of water, but they don't like their feet to get wet, stay wet. So trees are the same way. We already talked about how deep you want to do it. You want to amend that soil with compost and with sand. The compost is, is going to help your soil hold water, but the sand will help. The combination of the two are going to help it to drain. Um, and we have talked about the berm. So the extra soil that you take out, you can make yourself a little what did we call that? A rim? Yeah, a little edging. Yeah, a little, a little rim or edging around it. And the finished garden will be four to eight inches above the mulch. So that's how it's not going to be a, a deep hole. It's going to be just like a little um, saucer, like a saucer. And if you don't dig, have yours very deep, you want to make it larger to hold the rain and get creative make it make it don't make it rectangular or square get creative make it oval you know lay out do the trick with the hose where you lay the hose kind of randomly and follow that here's another um diagram about the rain garden it doesn't really show a berm so much here but it does show you the layers where you're going to do the amended soil your mulch layer and then then you have that area where the water can pond for that 24 hours. Okay, when you plant your rain garden, you wanna think about what kind of plants are gonna be okay being in a, a little pond for about a day. So uh, I would, I didn't say that here, but you wanna look for things that are gonna have deep roots that are gonna be able to carry the water down and avoid plants so you don't want to avoid plants that can deal with the dryness in between so you don't want to put marshy plants in your in your your rain garden you want to put something that doesn't mind a little you know like um native plants like native grasses and stuff like that they're not going to mind having it wet for a while but but they will be okay if it doesn't rain but you do want to make sure that you water, like if we have the drought that we've had the last couple of years, you still want to be able to, to water it now and then. Don't try and establish your plants from seed because the first rain is going to come and wash your seed away. Use larger plants that have been pre-started or maybe some plants that you've been able to split from your garden or from your friend's garden. And we already talked about watering it during the drain during the dry season and mulch within with two inches of non floating wood mulch. Do you know what I mean by floating wood mulch mm -hmm. those those chunks you can buy mulch that's like a, a, a pine chunks those will float those will blow in the wind so you want to use like a shredded mulch that's not going to float. And you will have to weed until your rain guard gets well established. Here's another. I really like this one. 
because it does show the berm and it shows some native plants, although I don't think those are all native plants. <laughs> and now this one gives you the idea that you could do a pipe. And I have seen a lot of pictures with that where you, you kind of hook a pipe to your, your downspout and then the pipe goes into your rain garden. I'm, it, I think when I do my rain garden, I will probably go with something like that because it would make it easier for my husband to mow. <laughs> I think if I put, if I put rocks there, he'd blow, no, I'm gonna pick those rocks up with my mower. I'm gonna ruin my blade or something. So there's another option that you can, can use. Um, you could probably do that with the overflow from your rain barrel. Just take, just, you know, take this. This is just a hose that which you would use like um, a sub pump in your basement. I don't know how much, how often you need to have sub pumps here. I know in Maryland, you need to have them in just about all your basements, but that's all this is. And I think it would hold up well to being buried also. But I don't think that roots would be able to permeate it very easily. Okay, any questions about rain gardens? Uh, at the end, I will have a, a link for you to go online. There is an 88 page thing that Iowa has put out that's all about rain gardens. I mean, it starts you step by step by step all the way through to what you wanna plant. Very good. And I'll have that in my resources for you to take a picture with your smartphone or whatever. So we're gonna, we're gonna go on to irrigating. Um, so, okay, we've had, had those drought years and I gotta tell you, my rain barrels were empty several times during that time. So I did have to go back to watering with city water. There was, there was no hope for it. And so we used irrigation systems, our drip irrigation systems on our, in our vegetable garden because you know, when your rain barrels dry, what do you do? <laughs> so let's look at using, if we have to irrigate with our city water, how to do it wisely where we're gonna get the most for our dollar. So let's keep a rain gauge in our, in near our gardens so we know exactly how much rain we've gotten or haven't gotten it. Most things do well with about an inch of rain a week. So this would help you know what you've got, how much, how much has come out of the clouds. And use your finger test to determine how wet, how, how deep the soil is moist. So you, all, I mean, it's really, so you just stick it in there and if your fingertip is still, still moist, you don't have to water right away. But if you do that and it's dry all the way down, then you wanna, you wanna get your, get some kind of watering system out. You do want to avoid overhead watering. One of the things that bothers me is when I see people watering, especially on a rainy day with those watering systems because, I mean, on a windy day, because the wind is carrying the, the sprinkling water away from where they want it to be. And it's wetting the road or it's wetting the sidewalk or it's wetting somebody else's property. And then if it's, if it's sunny, a lot of it is getting evaporated before it even gets down to where it needs to be. Water deeply. And by that, you, I would say, do, do your finger test water and see how far that water has gone down. You want it to go two to three inches down so that's getting to the roots. It's, I know it's real tempting just to water until it looks like it's wet, but no, you've got to water more because then you don't have to water quite so often. The only time you'd want to water daily is if you just put your, your seedlings out, they're going to need extra water until they get their root system established. Water in the morning. That's the best time to prevent diseases and you want to water the ground, not the plant. So if you're doing it by hose, make sure you get it down near the ground so you're getting the water into the soil, not getting the foliage wet because that's when it's gonna open the door to some fungal diseases. And this is this is shouldn't be a, a, a news flash, but you wanna you wanna put your plants together that require the same kind of water. You don't wanna put a plant that requires a lot of water in with plants that don't. 
So then you know that that particular section, wherever you've got those planted, are going to require water more often than some of your others, and you can just focus on that area. Add organic matter to increase the, the soil's water holding ability. Have you ever done a pot where you've just put compost in it and then watered it? The water just stays there and the compost doesn't seem to dry. You really need to mix that with your soil so you get a nice, nice even mixture. So you, you can tell that the compost is really gonna hold it, but you don't want it to hold too much, you're gonna rot your roots. But I, I did that with something and I said, what is wrong with this thing? It's not draining. It was all compost, that's why. And use drip irrigation systems. And we're gonna talk a little bit about those. The first one we're gonna talk about is really simple. The good old soaker hose. It's, it's easy. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to use it. Um, it just weeps out the water slowly into the ground. Um, it's handy if you need to water something across your driveway. You can just hook up that hose and let it do the thing and then unhook it. To keep it from degrading in the sun, you wanna cover it with some mulch. And you have to remember that because the water seeps out so slowly that you need to have that run a little extra longer than what you think you might need. And once again, that's where your finger comes in handy. Just See how far that water's gone down and see if you need to let it run some long, run longer or if you've got it. Now we use drip irrigation system. It's still relatively inexpensive. And if you use a timer, it's really convenient. Even if you don't use a timer, it's really convenient because you just turn it on. And it is a good, I mean, it's a good investment because the watering system that we have used, we moved from Maryland, and I I know it's got to be at least 20 years old, but we keep it covered with mulch when we use it, and we pick it up every, the end of the season, and drain it out, and put it in, you know, in the garage of the shed, so they last. You might have to replace some emitters, but the emitters are usually very, I mean, they're, they're very, very cheap. I just brought a section of one. I think I used this one in Maryland. And the emitters. Well, can't get it out. But anyway, the emitters are separate. If you poke that hole in the end, you put your emitters in and space them how you want them. They're efficient because all the water just about goes into the soil. You're not going to lose a lot to evaporation at all. So it takes less water to fully water your root zone. The foliage stays dry, so you don't have to, your your, your um, diseases are gonna stay low because you're not splashing water and bringing those fungus up to the leaves. And this is very much like the timer we, we use in ours. It works, it's, it's almost like those commercials set it and forget it, except if it rains, then you wanna shut it off so, so you're not watering something that doesn't need to have water. And I like to use them because in the garden, you don't get your muddy walkway, so you can you can go out there and work pretty pretty soon after you've watered. And it's reusable. Like I said, I've had mine for several years, but you want to keep it protected from the sunshine sun, so you want to put mulch over the top of it. And I've not ever had any trouble with rodents, but I'm sure they would love to chew on that plastic. Less weeds because you're not watering the weeds. You're only watering your, the, the target plants that you want the water to go to. Okay, what, what you need to get started is you need a pressure regulator and you can go as simple as something, see I got this from Dripworks, that's, that's, that's where I get my stuff. But it's, you want something that um, reduces your pressure because you could, blow out your emitters pretty easily if you have a, a good water pressure at your house. You need a filter, and I do, I didn't bring my filter, but to, especially here, we have a lot of minerals and stuff like that. It might pick up some of the minerals. Um, a backflow check valve, a lot of homes nowadays, the outdoor faucet has that built right in, so you don't have water going back. 
the flexible hose. I, this is not all of it because you also have a thing that you put on the end that you you plug it in a thing that goes on the other end that you can screw your hose onto. I didn't bring I didn't bring everything. And these are the emitters. And each emitter you can like with, with our with our tomatoes, we take an emitter and we put this right at the base of the tomato plant. So the water goes right to the base of the tomato plant. Or you can do, use strip tape. And we did use that uh, when we were in Maryland because we had long beds of green beans. And with a, with a drip tape, you can put that, the way, the way that worked is you had this big thick hose like this that filled up with water and then it slowly went through the drip tapes. And as with the, as with the soaker hose, you want to cover it with mulch to keep it protected from the sun. Do you have any questions about irrigating wisely, the drip tapes or anything like that? I think I'm just barely keeping you guys awake. Come on. We'll have to get up and do head and shoulders, knees and toes. Yeah. <laughs> I know. The end, of the, the end of the evening, I'm ready to shut down too. So here are some native plants that don't require a lot of water. Now you do need to water them occasionally, but they aren't gonna be a water hogs. Um, and then here's some that are non-natives for those of you who don't, aren't really excited about natives. I was wondering if it had one of my favorite ones on here. It doesn't, it doesn't have, Gallardia, which is also a pretty um, a, a plant that doesn't require a lot of water and it gives you a lot of blooms. It's very pretty. I guess I should have put a picture of that here. And oh, and these would be probably well, well, not the the sedums you'd probably have to put at the, at the top of your rain garden, but the um, a lot of these would probably. Oh, let's see. Let's put back here these would be great in your rain garden especially the sedges mm -hmm. which is like a short grass a sedges okay um other ways to find lost water i'll give you some of my ideas and then i'm going to ask you some of yours what happens to the first few minutes of water when you take a shower does it go down the drain because you have to wait for it to warm up right you don't want to take a cold shower. Well, this is what I do at my house. I have an ice cream bucket, one of those one gallon ones. So those buckets are so handy. And I put it under the faucet and run the first gallon in there. And by the time that ice cream bucket is almost full, the water is warm. And that goes, and I use that to, to, to water my edibles, my beets and carrots. That's where that water goes. So you know, if, if, if you shower and your husband showers every night, you've got two gallons of free water that you would have let go down the drain. And that, that you can use on your vegetables with a clear conscience because that's clean water. Here's another one that we use. That's our dehumidifier in our basement. And my husband put a condensate pump on it. And so it goes into that big bucket. And I use that water for my roses and my baby tree that we're growing and uh, my flowers don't use I don't use this on my edibles because the fins on you on your dehumidifier are metal and it can pick up some metal from those fins so I would not recommend you use this on your vegetables but it's great for everything else and the same is true with your air conditioning system condensate you can use that on on your your um Ornamentals, trees, shrubs, all that. Okay, now it's your turn. You got any ideas for finding lost water? Come on, audience participation here. <laughs> Leaky faucets. Do you save that water? Well, you can, and not only that, you can fix the leaky faucet. Good idea. Because I think uh, we have we have a drip that's downstairs. I've got to get my husband to fix too. 
how about in my house, my husband is, is, does the dishes. We had a big discussion and he decided he would do the dishes. He, he, when he washes dishes, he has a, a wash pan full of clean water, hot, clean, hot water that he rinses the dishes in. So there's not a lot of soap in it. And he uses that water. Now he uses it to, to, to flush his toy, to flush the toilet, but that water could be used on your ornamentals also because it has a very little bit of maybe a little bit of soap in it, but I'm, I'm still not sure I would use that on my edibles, but on your flowers. Yeah, you can do that. Soapy water can be used to put around your house to keep the box elder bugs away too. Yeah, I was going to say, do you, do you, I, I like to read a lot of books about what it was like being a pioneer or the first settlers in this area and water was so valuable that they would use their their dish soap water and throw it on a, a, a rose or something like that because they had brought that rose across the country with them and they wanted they wanted to be able to keep the rose alive but they couldn't use their drinking water because the water was just too valuable you had to go to the well or to the creek to get it or something like that so they would throw their their soapy dish water on their plants, probably not their vegetables, but on a special rose or something like that that they brought across country with them. Any other ideas? Well, I boil eggs. I use that water that I'm going to plant afterwards. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I would imagine if you boil beets or corn or anything, you could probably do that. Yeah. Maybe even pasta, who knows? As long as you don't have salt. Well, now that's true. I don't. Say, it could soften water. And a lot of us have water. If we didn't soften it, we could walk on it. There's <laughs> 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 no miracle. <laughs> and, and so that, that is now, I kind of think twice about. I just came up with an idea because I do do this. I can and do hot water baths and stuff like that. And I'll let that water cool down. And I've used it, especially during the drought, I've used that to water the baby tree we've got going. It's now, I mean, it's it's five years old now, but still I wanna make sure it lives. So I take that, you gotta let it cool, of course, but then I take that out and water it with it. Cause that's, a hot water bath holds a whole bunch of water. Okay. Um, any other questions? Any about, I, I know it's hard. I'm winding down for the day too. And I was, I didn't say this, but I know um, my rain barrels are kind of rednecky, but they do the job. So if, if you're artistic and you paint your barrels, I'd probably be, the neighbors might like it better. I've never heard my neighbors complain about my rain barrels though. <laughs> My daughter has an old uh, water heater, uh, and she collects it in there. Yeah. And then she was able to run the hose all the way out to her garden. And yeah, because old water, water heaters had that drain thing at the bottom. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, how smart. <laughs> She we had, have, she's in Rapid City, so she's been collecting a lot of water. Yeah. <laughs> it, we should put a hole like in the top of it. Or I suppose there's a hole. There is a bigger hole. Yeah, don't filter on it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 and it's. so plumber, you know, they just take them and throw them away. No, it's like, yeah. And we had our hot water heater replaced a couple of years ago. I know, we just did. I could have had another rain barrel. Uh, exactly. Yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah. Oh, why? girls that fit the size of the house that they kind of match. They look like a an old whiskey barrel, but they're you know they're that high. But the the thing about them is that the sides and the top of it last really well. The spigot does not handle the weather so much, and so yeah, my husband has replaced that several times and frequently. They will change the design of the rain barrel, and so that, of course, goes. There, of course, goes this new spigot or the old the spigot that is different. So he's using tape, and he's 
been around. No, I'm thinking all the time. Now, you know, at the, the end of day, the, the other day, at the end of the, yeah. of it. at the end of the season, you have to clean to empty those rain barrels out. Mine get all full of algae, so my husband takes a power washer and he washes them all out, and then we make sure they're all empty and lay them on their side because you don't want to store them with water in them, of course, in our winters. So, and then in the spring, he gets them all back out. He's a really good sport about this, I got to tell you. <laughs> I don't know how I got so lucky with him doing that. I think it's, uh, I think it's because the first year we were here, we went into shock when we saw how much it costs to water all of our plants with house water. So I think that's probably what's helped motivate him to be my helper when it comes to rain barrels. Yeah, <laughs> but you're right. This one here, it's a good demonstration to show you, but it's, it's broken because he hit it with a lawnmower. <laughs> so he had to get a replacement, and when he got a replacement, we bought another one. Especially if it fits. Well, yeah, see, because our, ours are basically do-it-yourself ones, he knows what size to drill the hole so that this will fit. And then there's, if you see, there's, there's seals there, and then you've got the Teflon tape that you're going to put around the grooves to make sure that it seals well. We use a lot of Teflon tape. Like this one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, and here's my resources. Um, this book will be in the library after tonight. Right now it's in my possession. But um, this is a good resource. It talks about rain barrels, rain gardens, irrigation, and it has a few other topics. Um, about designing your your garden to look like water, you know, like, anyway, this is a good resource. I've also used uh, information from my Maryland Master, my Maryland Master Gardener book, which isn't available, but um, this one is, has got good information. And this site here has an 88 page book all about how to do rain gardens and I um, if you if you copy down this you want to put it in the top don't put it in the Google search thing put it on the top bar and it'll pull it'll pull this right up I've got hmm did you can you get it <laughs> tell me when you're done before I change it because I have it okay well you you have it. You have it. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. We want to go to this. There's the, there's, it's, I wouldn't call it a pamphlet because it's 88 pages. It's a little booklet that Iowa puts out. So you know it's going to be relevant for our area. And it, um, I'll pull up what the table of contents has. So it, it tells you what a rain garden is, tells you how to install it. It even uh, tells you, what kind of plants to put in it. So if you're interested in, in starting a rain garden, this is an excellent free resource. I think that's, oh, and there's more table of context too. <laughs> Maintaining it, yes, there you go. I don't have a rain garden at this time, but I think there will be one in my near future after all this research, yes. So any final questions? You have not. People put down, I think it's more for weed control, but I think it could help with the water when they put down grass or they put down straw or they put down landscaping fabric. Does that also help keep evaporation? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I mulch in my garden with straw, I'm with my vegetable garden. I put that down because it, it helps it helps keep the moisture in the soil. And, it, and around here, when we get really heavy rains, it helps the soil not splash up on your plants too. So it helps keep your... Your plant's disease-free, it helps keep the moisture in the soil. And the garden fabric, if I use that, I would make sure it was something that let the rain go through. Don't, don't use like a plastic, because if you use a plastic, then that's when you definitely want to have the, the drip tape or the, the drip system set up, because you still got to get water to your plants. But yeah, they... Like I said, I, I was in Maryland and I learned a lot of neat tricks from the Amish. 
they they had woven fabric that they put down over their their irrigation system so not only did they irrigate but they also got the rain that went through the woven fabric so that they took advantage of the natural rain also but all that does help keep moisture mulch is great for keeping moisture in your soil and, and it helps a little bit with weeds too mm -hmm. we always put newspaper lots of newspaper down that's and yeah put the grass on top of it to hold it there yeah grass clippings are great you just have to make sure you know where your source of grass clippings are because oh yes you know if they're your grass clippings and you know you don't put any herbicides on your grass <laughs> that's the way to go yep. but if you get it from your neighbors or something you need to make sure that you know what they're doing to their lawn you know if there's no weeds in their lawn you might want to think twice about using their grass clippings <laughs> <laughs> or if they do use an herbicide like pre-emergence or something like that you gotta wait at least three cuttings that you throw away. Mm -hmm. i thought it was two but three i i usually do three. Oh. Okay, well, if there's no other questions, thank you for being a very attentive. <laughs> we'll be right back here at the library next month, and we're back to our regular schedule with um, 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. And we're going to be talking about food forests, which is kind of an, a concept that is being encouraged in communities, especially in um, nutritional forests where they don't have access to, to fresh food, fruit and vegetables. Mm -hmm. So Marlos will be talking about that next month. Mm -hmm. So we hope to see you back. Mm -hmm. And if you need any seeds tonight, let me know and we'll get those pulled for you. Second Tuesday.